give our people a couple of minutes to log in. Yeah, I'm hitting that like mid afternoon on a Monday, like lull. <laughs> so, like the opposite sleepiness point of where you're at. Yeah. Ah. Like, uh, look, it'll be a low key one. Um, there are, you know, there are still good things to recap. Yeah, is there a way to open this and open voice chat in a separate window? Mm. I don't think you can pop it out like you can with a. Oh, wait, no, you can. Yeah, bottom right, there should be a pop out button. But I think the chat is still tied to it. You'll be able to see like other. Uh, oh no, members. that's actually a lot better. I just needed to make it bigger. Mm. Sigmund has requested to speak. We'll bring up people to speak here in a little bit. Yeah, yeah give it a couple minutes. Please no. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to dismiss it then. Yeah, Jeff, I have no idea why you can't hear these. It's very odd. <sighs> um. All right, so we got some people in. It's five minutes past. I'm going to basically catch everybody up real quick on what happened this week. Mm. And I'm going to do it in like two or three sentences. So... <laughs> Rapid fire, let's go. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> starting with the negative first is and I think I think currently bridging the, the bridging wallet and the liquidity over at uh Shiba Swap is valued somewhere around like a hundred thousand between Ethereum and KTO. Yeah. So about a hundred thousand. So the project this week has lost a thousand a hundred thousand dollars but the project has also spent about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to complete its build on its actual project so we're coming <laughs> out <laughs> fifty thousand dollars in the positive uh, Kind of. <laughs> of yeah, kind of. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we've spent a quarter million of dollars in uh, in a week. Um, and on one, it, it's a, a week of dualities, if you will. Really? Um, yes. <laughs> and, and it all hinges on a hundred to $150,000. It's mm. spending it to produce and to grow the project. And then it is also losing it because of a a fuck up. At the yeah. end of the day, though, uh, the community is still here and the project is still secure. And the project is still moving uh, forward, um, mm. which is good to hear, bad to hear on the other. So then let's talk about price action. Obviously, price action has been god fucking awful. Mm. Uh, and that, I think, is because of a lot of the, the negative news, because you announce something on Friday and then Monday happens and it's a different it's a different day. And that's how it moves in crypto um, and the volatility, the swings, the 40 to 50 percent um, swings are what happens in nano caps. Um, just like we pump a thousand percent in 30 days, you can lose 50, 75 percent in a matter of days as well. Um, uh, an amazing thing, sorry, yeah, <laughs> um, in, a, <laughs> an amazing thing 
is when you have something like this happen to show the strength of the floor that is currently being built, um, the floor is almost 150% to 200, I'd have to do the math on it, to about 200% above what the previous floor was. Um, and, and to me, who is a very long-term investor, um, that is that is good to see, even when something catastrophic um, like this happens. <laughs> yeah. And, so there and you things, go. All that's, things considered. It, that's uh, the week. <laughs> yeah. All we can do is position ourselves as best as possible. Um, as you said, we have a lot of things to be excited about and grateful for, such as, you know, having met the target to be able to pay Tech Alchemy in full um, and have development recommence within two weeks, which is really exciting. Um, and uh, ST6998, yeah, um, has asked, was it a KTO issue or a ShibaSwap issue? Um, I mean, it wasn't something like, it wasn't a vulnerability in our contract or anything like that. It was just an oversight. Um, the liquidity pool was not moved from the bridging wallet to the ledger quick enough, and we were a victim of a large-scale phishing attack. Um, again, it it doesn't really matter how it happened because it was our oversight and that's just something that we have to bear um, and is, you know, trust we have to rebuild going forward. Um, I kind of mentioned it last night, but the, the devs have certainly had an earful from me several times over um, and Jax and a few others. Um, certainly won't be a mistake that's made again. Everything else is, is secure on ledgers. Um, you know, everything has been double and triple checked. So that's all safe. Um, we can only, yeah, we can only be grateful that it was only one pool that was lost. Um, but yeah. just goes to show, you, even if you think you're safe, or even if you think that, you know, another week will be all right, it won't. It re that's just the reality of this space. And as it gets larger, you know, you're going to get more people in the, involved, and that's more potential for malicious actors. Human greed so knows no bounds. <laughs> let's. I, I would love to actually um, talk about. Um, what actually occurs um, coming out of this, right? What it actually it impacts is mm. if you have traded on Shiba Swap, if you have, if you hold KTO, um, it does not impact you at all. Mm. The only way it actually impacts you is by a price impact when that individual sells. So. I am going to use an example of something that happened in the last 24 hours. Someone has sold uh, somewhere around six trillion, six to uh, six and a half trillion. That one person, our price went from six, five, I believe, or sorry, seven, I think it was seven, one down to five, five. Mm. Right. And unfortunately, Right now, uh, because of the nature of we're in a sit and wait uh, scenario, is we were not able to enact um, kind of our defense mechanisms, right? When a whale exits like that large or numerous whales, um, because of our sliding scale, we can usually get rid of the buy tax to increase the power that buying has, right? Mm. You, all of a sudden, the buy side is now going to have a 10% more powerful impact on price because it has a zero tax versus a 10 tax on the sell side, right? So that's actually very good. But because of the nature, because we have to sit and wait for this actually to all play out, because yeah, it's a $6 trillion, um, sale. We say don't trade on there because the reality is we just don't want to give that guy any more money. It is perfectly safe to be trading back and forth, but you will literally be pissing away money and giving it to a guy that likes to hack and steal. Um, <laughs> that's the, 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 the reason why. Um, what, what happens to your individual tokens, what happens to your individual wallets, there is no impact to the security of them. Yeah. Uh -oh. But let it serve as a, as a reminder for everyone, including myself, like I 100% have always been someone who's really complacent when it comes to my own wallets. Um, 
but even I have a ledger on the way now. Um, because, yeah, it just goes to show as these attacks get more sophisticated, you know, nobody is safe. Like I said, this bridging wallet was only alive for a matter of, like, six weeks or so. Um, or, or at least, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was around about six weeks. It only had the liquidity on it for, you know, just under a month. And this vulnerability was, you know, exposed. And again, like I said the last night, expensive lesson for the project. But um, we yeah. all we can do is be grateful it didn't affect the community's actual tokens. Uh, Adam. Uh, just a quick question here. You were saying that um, you guys can remove the buy tax, and then that doesn't – that will – what would you say? It will affect the price action of the price, give the buying more power? I thought the tax. Um, I thought the tax was applied with the uh, buy itself, or is that some some sort of a tech fuckery going on beforehand? Um, so, be go ahead, Queenie. Oh, so yeah. So we have a um, like one of the main parts of our tokenomics is we have a sliding tax scale. So anything between um, you know like one or zero rather and ten percent, um, we can we can play with and allocate to um, marketing wallet or. Uh, community reflections or we can put it to zero which is what we refer to as like when we used to have no tax Tuesdays and things like that um, so what we do is we can prop up price action and we can pop up uh, sorry prop up buying activity by reducing this barrier to entry reducing this um, tax amount so it's something we can do at will um, we, we're not in the habit of doing it without announcing it to the community of course um, but of it course. is something that we can yeah potentially implement as a solution once that and um, liquidity has been unlocked in five days and we suffer, you know, the price effect of that. Which I may not have phrased my question too well. I was just saying um, the tax itself. I thought that was something that was um, like we buy it, that goes through, hits the exchanges, does all the things, and then the tax comes out or does the tax happen before the uh, the price hits the chart, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, they happen concurrently, yeah. Oh, okay. So it doesn't. So the tax itself doesn't affect the chart, and that's how whenever you guys remove the tax, that it increases the the power of the buys and whatnot, like you were saying. Um, it's just it just shows as part of the transaction. So if you were to break down the Etherscan transactions of your um, KTO purchase, you'll see a line that's the amount that you bought and a line that's the um, reflect like the taxed amount, which from there gets split off into um, reflections to everybody and reflections to the marketing wallet. Okay. Or I should say I, I allocations. Yeah. I do understand that part. Um, now, I was just confused when you're saying, like, we, we remove the buy tax and then suddenly the, the price will move a lot more because there's more volume going to the price. Yeah, that... sorry. Sorry, I get what yeah. you're saying. Though. Yeah, yeah. So okay. the idea is, is yep. typically just more people, you know, people like so getting more bang for their buck. More people to come yeah. In. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So what it, you know, the second thing more, I did. The Sorry, second thing that it actually does is also reduces the the gas spent mm -hmm. on um, the gas spent on uh, the transaction, right? So if you're spending two hundred dollars uh, to buy two hundred dollars, um, you'll get um, more like seventy five dollars worth if you yeah. have the tax on. Yeah, yep. a portion of that gas it'll... goes to executing the contract, which is why the gas for buying KTO is slightly higher than other projects, even if we, um, right. like, even exactly. if you're not factoring in the 10%. So it will come across as a, so if there's a, the 10% tax on it, right, then on a 200 buy, if it's 200 total in the transaction, uh, it will come across as 75 or what, whatever the, the math is when uh, gas is. So yeah, the gas will drop significantly, which is also um, nice. And and so that's the thing. Like you've got your people who are just wanting to chuck fifty bucks in, then you know they're actually getting more uh, more bang for their buck. And also, you know, what better time to purchase with a large sum than when you've got you know ten percent isn't being taken. Again, most people in the community that. Um, have done their research and or, you know, just have been here long enough, understand exactly why we have the tax and, and what it's for. And most of us are, you know, comfortable with it at this point, but it's still a fact that it is a barrier to entry for many people, which is why building the exchange is all the more important because when we've got the exchange up and running with staking functional, that's, you know, when the uh, tax will go away. 
the token becomes a lot easier to trade. Mm, yes. Um. Yeah. So that ha that has happened today. So anyone? Uh, what is it? Show request. Jake. Yeah, we got Jake coming up. Hi, gang. Hello. Hello. How are you? So normally when we have like buys and sells, like the whole anti-whale thing, so they can't dump. So someone couldn't dump, say, 10 trillion tokens at once, right? I mean, they could. I thought we had something in place so that it had to be no, like... So that was, that was the wallet maximum, so that used to be um, 2 trillion or whatever it was, and now it's 10. So 10 trillion is still the limit in place. You can only exceed that in one wallet. That's the limit you can have, but you can, you, but you could, they can, when they go to do this sell in five days, they can literally dump all at once, though, right? Correct, because they they have yeah. less than ten trillion tokens in that wallet. That sucks. Okay, that's all yeah. I wanted. Yeah, no, it's something that we've considered. Like we're, you know, we've explored all the functionalities we have available to us in the contract, um, and unfortunately, or I guess fortunately, it's we're not here to just like we don't have the ability to just you know pinpoint one person and be like fuck you <laughs> um which you know is a win for uh for DeFi and security but um sucks in a moment like this where you're like man i wish i could just blacklist that one wallet and then we'd be fine we could just consider yeah. it a burn <laughs> yeah unfortunately we don't have that power to blacklist mm. yep oh but um I mean, you know, I, I know that it's going to be the topic of discussion for some time, but um, it is what it is. It's it's happened. We know, like I said, we can only learn from it and and improve and try to recover it. Um, but thank, like, I'm just really grateful now that it um, hasn't impacted our ability to pay tech alchemy which is the main thing. And that's, you know, a really big goal we've been working towards for a long time. Um, and is, you know, it's it's exciting. It's still exciting. I really enjoyed the um, AMA that we had with Soham as well. He's lovely to work with and Tech Alchemy are, are big fans of our project, which is really exciting to see. Oh, Mr. J. Mr. J. Fire away. Hey guys. Hey. Hello. Hi, Glenn. Thank Thank you very much for doing this. Uh, we appreciate what you are giving all the information you've given us. Um, I understand that the devs has a plan of how to try to minimize the uh, the issue or the problem that they can, this can cause. Um, mm -hmm. How can we help to minimize that as well? Is there anything we can do? to help i mean just i guess you know the continued support is fantastic um and you know for the most part people have been really understanding and and kind to one another which is great to see um realistically it's just if you're if you're planning to buy um do so you know after that but when, dump take but advantage when are, of the price action okay. <laughs> All right, but when we're talking about buying, we need to mm. buy on Shiva swap or we need to buy on Uniswap. You need, I mean, you can, to be honest, you can buy wherever. Okay. If you buy on Shiva swap right now, that will be your, that money that you, so when you purchase, right, you're, you mm -hmm. take Ethereum and you get KTO in return. Yeah. So that normally stays inside a locked liquidity pool, your ether that you just swapped out. So um, KTO gets taken out of that liquidity pool, deposited it into your wallet. Your Ethereum goes and gets exchanged and deposited into that liquidity pool. And there's a balance, right, of mm -hmm. KTO and Ethereum in that liquidity pool. Um, at the end of those five days, whatever is left in that liquidity pool, we are anticipating that the person that took control and transferred ownership is going to take all of that, which is all the Ethereum. I think there's like 36 or 37 Ethereum in there and whatever amount of KTO is in there. 
Okay. At the end of the day, though, you still have your KTO. Yes, but then doesn't really matter if we uh, buy uh, or sell on Shiba Swap. Still has the, if we sell, he gets more money, or if we either way, or if we buy and yeah. sell, he gets more money. Yeah, it doesn't matter over there. Okay, I got you. All right, thank you for the answer. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you for asking it. Uh, um, we're going to bring in ST6998. Did it bring him up? Um, it's. Invite was sent. I don't know. <laughs> just wanted to jump in really quick. Um, uh, just just something I wanted to add in. So you know, I wanted to let you guys know the type of exchange and the people that we are working with. So Soham saw the AMA today and decided to reach out. Um, right now we have one of the, essentially the best blockchain experts looking in for ways to make this right uh i wanted to let you guys know that um and essentially exactly what his words were is if they can't find a way to fix it it probably doesn't exist um so so that was great news to hear um and, and this is you know i just wanted to let you guys know this the kind of uh you know people that are building our exchange so all right i'll, I'll go back to my corner <laughs> thank you for that that's actually pretty and, cool yeah and like i said it's just a testament to the working relationship we have with tech alchemy they're really like great guys um and you know when we had our recent run-up um of uh, you know in price action um they actually reached out to us because at one point um the previous team paid an installment to tech alchemy in tokens um, so that value had increased from like ten thousand dollars to you know forty plus, um, and they were well within their rights to just dump that on us. Um, but they actually reached out to us first and like asked us for you know permission to sell it and how to sell it logically and things like that. Like they fully worked with us, um, which you know there are a lot of companies that I could say would never do that. So I think we we you know we have an ally in Tech Alchemy and it's really wonderful to see. And I'm I'm really looking forward to the progress on the exchange and seeing what we can achieve uh to, to add a little bit on to that queenie um and sorry i'm driving home that's why I'm, i can't really join you guys right now they actually <laughs> when they re when they reached out it was just to cover the costs of the the current work that they have done and that's all oh, they were yeah looking of course at. yeah it was they're absolutely amazing i mean amazing yeah no absolutely um yeah, yeah. Sorry, I should I was should specify they weren't asking to sell for personal gain. They were asking to sell to help pay off more of our, uh, you know, our outstanding bill with them. Which, again, they could have just claimed it and done it as soon as it pumped, and they didn't. Which you know, again, we can appreciate, as we've seen. You know, our project is still small, so it can't withstand significant um, price action. Not yet. <laughs> Yeah, but at least you know it goes both ways. So what goes down comes back up, and vice versa. A ten ETH uh, sell can dump us just as quickly as a ten ETH buy can pump us. So <laughs> it, uh, yeah. Two what sides. um, and here's the the other thing I because I understand and um, I think I heard it in the AMA that there is a um, there is a plan. For let's say everything goes wrong and we do get the six or seven trillion, whatever it is, um, the the cost will be what twenty, thirty thousand. Um, if I heard right, already, do you guys have a plan to buy that supply um, when that sell goes through? Yeah, this this is the current things we are we are currently going over. Yes, uh, we we have intentions to do both things here uh one try to find a way to screw this guy in any way and to go back to uh what you know i think mr j's question was when it came to 
buying over on Shiba Swap. Uh, the notion that that we're kind of sticking with is to make sure this guy has the least amount of KTO as possible. We understand we can't do anything when it comes to the ETH side of things, uh, but we, we don't want him to inherently be able to either pin our price down or dump you know, 10 trillion tokens on us all at once. Um, and, and on the other notion of of trying to correct this financially is is something that we are prepared for. Yeah. Yep. So. And again, it's something that the project can afford. It doesn't, it won't impact our, you know, our development. It's just our, this, you know, the slush fund that we've uh, accumulated, so to speak. So it, you know, it, it is still a setback. It's not, you know, um, no two ways about that, but it won't affect anything that we've already allotted funds for. It won't affect the exchange being developed. Um, just, you know, limits our uh, ability to use that money um, for a little bit until we reaccumulate it. But that's just how it is. And look, if that's the, the price we have to pay <laughs> compared to how things could have gone, it's a slap on the wrist and one that we're willing to take. Uh, yeah, I mean, and I don't want to be one of those people that like passes over when shit happens that shouldn't happen, oh, right? 100%. I think everybody in this community can agree this should not have happened, but it happens. So now you have to pick the hard. What hard do you want? Do you want the hard now when we are a nano cap, or do you want the hard now when we are a world renowned exchange? managing millions of dollars that's the reality of the situation that's the end goal of it i not i have two devs up here and i say it to the devs and i say it in front of it, like everybody is if these knuckleheads are going to learn then they're they better learn now uh yeah. where we're talking tens of thousands of dollars and not millions and not when you're you're going to be up uh trying to file for licenses and, and shit like that it's like now's the time um and i i look forward to to seeing this development team uh basically having a giant bonfire lit under their ass and moving this project forward at rapid speed because one of the things I have learned from the last AMA and the written form was this exchange is paid for. Well, contracts are going to get signed, I believe, this week, and the money is being sent. And then money's, uh, yeah, like if it hasn't already gone, it's just a matter of like days. There you go. <laughs> not, not even right. And <laughs> yeah. then we're building, and then there's the actual fruition of of the vision that again. I believe so. Soham, the CEO of the company that is actually building it, said, mm -hmm. "I am confident and high level of confident that the exchange will be public and used by the end of the year." And yeah. for anyone that doesn't know who Soham is or who doesn't know the pedigree that Tech Alchemy is, I highly, highly suggest you do intense research on them because it. it a company like Tech Alchemy that works with very high level institutions, hedge mm. funds and banks and financial financially regulated, insured and secured companies, real estate uh, groups, also. real estate groups is for someone to say that is not some shitty ass meme coin token saying, yeah, we'll get this done soon. It is a different pedigree that I, I actually take a lot of merit in, and that's why I asked him directly, no offense to our developers, but <laughs> he's the coder with a, a whole lot of background and a lot of certifications and a lot of uh, clientele that has spoken to that volume. Sorry. Queenie. Absolutely. No, no, it's, and I, I totally agree. Um, again, it it was an expensive lesson. It's taught us where we need to be better. Um, and again, like we, I don't think anybody in the community has ever pretended, or rather, sorry, I should say, I don't think anybody in this dev team has ever pretended to be anything they're not. No one came into this saying we're solidity experts, we're blockchain masters, 
or anything like that. You know, they were community members who stepped up to the plate and, of course, have their own skills. Um, but when it comes to a solidity perspective, absolutely, there are experts that we that we defer to, such as Soham, um, and some of the more skilled members of our community, which, again, the support is really great to see. Um, but, again, it was really, it's it just comes down to a, a moment of complacency, which was taken advantage of. And that's just, you know, the cross we have to bear. <laughs> um, and we will recover. And it hasn't killed us by no, like, you know, by no means will it uh, tank this project or stop us being able to, to keep building, which is what we're all about. We've been through the ringer before. We've experienced malicious dumps from, uh, you know, other projects. In the past, we've experienced months and months of, you know, minimal volume and sideways <laughs> movement. And we're still here today. So the you know, is what matters and the progress towards it. Yeah, so I am totally going to take this out of context. But basically <laughs> what happened today is some guy that we know, we knew he bought into KTO. He bought $8 trillion of it. We knew he logged into our Discord and he said, hey, guys. I'm buying eight trillion, and then in five days, I'm going to swing trade it on you, and I'm going to sell the whole thing. And this is literally what just happened. It's basically, we got a bad whale. We'll call it a whale because <laughs> there we have bigger whales than this guy, but there are we 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 know we got a bad whale, and we know exactly what happens when a bad whale exit we've mm -hmm. seen it before we've seen it in the last two years uh and we've hit all-time highs twice now um so that is that in my eyes that's how i'm rationalizing it through it yeah it yeah if you do great. trade it as just a uh, <laughs> as a, a whale with six trillion who's, who's planning to dump on us that's uh <laughs> that is one way of looking at it um and yeah like you know we've we've been through bigger cells and, and that wasn't you know that's not the issue the issue here is, is just the fact that it happened um but yeah that, that's definitely one way to look at it and you know i think it's important to note as well that the current team we have a very strong policy in place um, across, you know, everybody from from support slash moderator up to developer to, um, you know, everybody is allowed to sell. We would never prevent anybody in the community or the team from selling, but there is a way to do it where you're not being harmful to the project. Um, we have a zero tolerance policy for dumping on the project, especially as, you know, team members and people who are meant to be serving the project. Um, and Again, you know, we're all willing to work with one another. If you know, if you're in an emergency and you need money quickly, you know, our team are one that we're all close enough that we're willing to do things like facilitate, you know, peer-to-peer -peer transactions rather than on market, so that we don't dump the price. Um, so when you see these, you know, large cells, um, and you know, pe people are savvy; they find ways to trace to who it is. Um, I can, you know. Can almost guarantee you it's not from not from the current um definitely not the current developers and uh anybody in the team who has been caught doing that sort of thing has been reprimanded because it's not acceptable our project isn't large enough to sustain those um and you know we've provided education on how to sell in a reasonable uh manner without affecting the project more than you need to yeah i i'd be blunt I bought tokens off of people peer to peer, yeah, because they needed the money to go. That's yep. pure, purely it. I want to answer. Um, I, and what if this bad well never sells by crypto? Um, I really I wish you would. Yeah, I wish you would jump in here and pronounce that second part. Um, mm -hmm. If if this quote unquote bad well never sell sells, mm -hmm. what what a fucking Hey Cram, can you mute? Um, <laughs> then we then then we just gained a fantastic whale. He just went about it in a shitty way. 
<laughs> I mean, if you really want me to, to tell, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Um, I will say for anyone that's super savvy at EtherScan, um, the the team has. If you go into the wallet that has taken over, um, the the ownership of it, we actually have transferred. We have sent them money, not not money, but we've sent them a transaction. Um, and if you decode that transaction, uh, like a person with a lot of experience in crypto would, they they sent them an a, a message saying, "Hey, congratulations! You've been able to figure this out. You're really smart. We will we will buy back um, the crypto from you um, and save you the ten percent discount from." Um, selling on open market to try to protect the, the give community. them a 10 percent discount <laughs> yeah so the the team has taken steps uh to try and buy it back on a peer-to-peer -peer level uh, they have not heard back yet uh from my understanding um but you can go look it up on etherscan um there is that transaction there as well where we have reached out to the um to the hacker so yeah um, on that point, um, Adesanya, um, if he sells in like three months or the end of the year, I mean, look, that is a possibility, but typically um, operations of this size are automated. Like people don't have enough hours in the day to achieve what this person's been achieving. Um, so realistically, what you'd expect is a, you know, in an extremely layman way of putting it is, you know, something checking can i sell this can i sell this can i sell this periodically so when the sell occurs you can expect it will likely be automatic um and the only reason it hasn't happened so far is because of the team finance lock so you know th that's just um, you know our expectation based on other similar um setups that you can see in the space and Queenie, can you explain the team finance lockup and the way that interacts with our wallet? Um, yeah, well, I mean, simply put, team so um, like Uniswap users, Unicrypt, uh, ShibaSwap use team finance. It's just a way of locking up your liquidity um, so that it can't be dumped. It's a way of protecting your community. Um, so what we we didn't realize, um, which again, y'all untapped on, like tapped into this um, during the AMA or perhaps during our staff meeting. I can't quite recall. It's all blurring together for me. <laughs> um, is that the way Team Finance do it is that they give you a receipt for your lock, which is a bit silly because you can actually transfer it out at any time, which is what happened to us. So I guess like think of it almost like uh, you've got your car in valet um, and you know your ticket to collect it has just been given to somebody else. Um, and now we have no way of, of saying like, hey, wait, that's actually ours. Um, team finance, you know, they're a decentralized service, so they don't retain the ability to just alter things at will. Um, so yeah, we, you know, we did reach out to them to, to see if perhaps they could extend it indefinitely or if they could transfer ownership back to us, but it's something that they simply don't have the power to do. Um, so, so yeah, as part of, uh, you know, the compromising of the bridge wallet, because the only thing of value in there was this ownership token, it got transferred out um, and now, you know, as, as we've explained, when it unlocks in five days, because that's just the end of the locking period, um, then, yeah, they'll have the ability to cash in that ownership token for the liquidity and be able to sell it at, you know, at will. So, <laughs> yeah, Valet so, dude sold our ticket. <laughs> He's driving it, off with that yeah. Lambo. <laughs> that was actually a very excellent metaphor. Thank you for, for walking us through that. Um, so again, now let's, uh, I, I don't want to keep harping on it. We've gained a bad whale guys. The fun thing is we actually know they're a bad whale. Um, so do with we that. Can prepare for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We know it's <laughs> happening. Um, again, we know, uh, there's going to be a 6 trillion sale. We know that the price action is probably going to we're at four right now it'll probably we may to be one. honest we may gain a zero it's really difficult to i don't think it's actually going to go that level i don't i, I could well, be wrong uh, it depends it, on how successful we are at informing people 
you know, yes. at the moment we're trying to spread it as much as possible, but there are always yeah. going to be people who see a large drop in the chart and panic or, you know, right. reposition. And if, and, and that's kind of why I had already um, explain is notifications will be set on this mm. wallet. I can tell you, I have already notified, put a notification um, that when any of this wallet shows movement immediately, I'm going to be grabbing my phone and trying to snatch. There's stuff mm -hmm. though that it's going to buy it really quickly. And if the team is prepping, then it's probably going to get eaten almost instantly. Um, that's, that is what I would say. Uh, so be prepared for that um, as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's the thing. Information is our, is our best friend right now. Um, again, for those who missed it last night, I, something I pointed out is that we're really, like, again, as lucky as we could be in, in an unfortunate situation um, in that we do have a few days left on this locking period. So most projects won't get a grace period. They just wake up and their project's been dumped and then they have to backtrack and try and figure out what happened. So at least in this instance, we actually have a little bit of a grace period, a little bit of leeway to give this information to you guys so you can make informed decisions about your investments. And, you know, we can actually sort of strategize what we're going to do. Um, which, yeah, if he'd stolen it, you know, any later, <laughs> it might not have been so, we might not have been so lucky. We would have been talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, yeah. Because that liquidity pool was up to 200 some odd thousand dollars, 200, $300,000 at one point. So, um, <laughs> yeah, there's that. And... That is the beautiful thing. Thank you for saying that, SJ Diamond Hand. Um, we are going to be keep going forward because out of all of this, <laughs> the crazy amount of money is that has transferred is at all those cells, and even on this upcoming cell, there will be a ten percent tax on it that will be going to funding, speeding up the uh, the project uh, and the development. Um, and then also reflections back to to holders, which I understand it's like a joke right now at this level, the reflections. Um, but just wait until the next time we challenge all time high and you're like, I can't believe I have this many free tokens um, mm -hmm. because zeros start adding quickly. Uh, question, the chances of catching this individual are practically nil, question mark. Um, well, to be honest, who knows? Mm. Genuinely, who knows? Um, if we can untangle the web p potentially, but even if you track it back to an original wallet, identifying the actual individual out there in the world is a we'll whole nother. Years. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm going I'm to I'm go back to saying that, you know, Tech Alchemy has offered to dive into this thing in the morning and they're going to look at every route every angle understand what has happened and like i said their words if they can't find it there's probably no fix so we'll see what come, and, they come back with yeah and it's a lovely thing you know our community is full of a lot of dedicated individuals and we have people from you know solidity beginners to gray hat hackers looking into this for us which is you know very kind um a lot of people sharing their expert expertise and their time to decipher this um, um sibian go for it oh, sibian yes. asked are we able to get taxes reduced once they empty out um it is something that we're definitely looking at doing whether or not we do a couple of days of zero percent buy tax um so that we can yeah help prop up the price and prop up that buy action um so that people you know can buy the dip without a barrier to entry, without it costing them anything, um, or rather, you know, costing them anything on top of their actual purchase price. Um, whatever we can do, like I said, to minimize the harm caused by the dump. Um, Bonka, um, more money equals more speed. <laughs> that is literally it. To a point, because we still want quality. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, um, go for it. So that weird crypto dude said what time and date that the lock ends. Um, I can grab the link for you because 
Um, I know Dan Bingo provided it last night. It has an exact countdown and timer. Um, I think it's just under five days now. Let me see if I can find that for you. Any new major exchange listings? <laughs> Rebuilding our uh, pool on CheaperSwap is the next uh, <laughs> goal, I think. We definitely don't have any. Um, there's no plans at the current time. Like, you know, we've spoken to exchanges, but a lot of them are uh, charge a uh, charge a kidney. <laughs> to list, especially if you're a small project like us, um, they absolutely look to take advantage of people, which is really frustrating and upsetting. And sometimes I get to have a fun conversation where I'm like, yeah, also, I've been on the side of this conversation where I'm coming from an extremely popular project, so I know you're full of shit. <laughs> um, so, you know, we've got to balance looking out for the community and, um, you know, also achieving growth. Yeah, let's see. How will we deal if this happens again? Um, uh. <laughs> I will. <t> so <laughs> I will tell you flat out. Um, if this happens again, when it comes like this exact thing, um, I I would <laughs> I would be like, what the what it the can't. fuck are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it needs I'd... to be everything needs to be on hardware and then. Uh, bringing in a, a, a security specialist um, in in all of this, so. Yeah, I, I mean, to better put it, this will never happen again. And, and that is that is where I sit. Uh, it is literally going to be the first and the last step that I say every day I wake up and go to bed, are we secure? Mm. Absolutely. and. You know, again, it's not like this happened because we weren't valuing security. It was simply a moment of complacency where we thought we had more time, more breathing room than we did. And the reality is in this space, you do not have time or breathing room. Let's see. The Lord, uh, is it said? Sorry if I said that wrong. Um, the next step is to hire a security professional, question mark. Um, I mean, look, it's definitely something that's now you know more so on our radar um whether or not it's something that we can perhaps leverage with our relationship with check alchemy um because you know as we said the devs aren't being paid currently um and other paid roles aren't really being paid currently either um because you know everyone like everyone on the team really just wants to see the project progress and succeed so hiring another person you know, is kind of expecting them to do it for free, <laughs> um, at least for now. So, you know, it's a bit um, one of those things where it's like, of course, it's a priority, but it, we can't go hiring someone um, on the on the promise of pay unless there's somebody who you're, you know, already has a tie to this project and kind of already has that emotional um, attachment to it and willingness to forego pay to see it succeed. So, kind of yes. a. Uh, if we find someone who fits the bill, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but if, yeah, like I said, if we can leverage the skills in our community, in people who are already associated with us, people who are already invested, um, not just, you know, financially in the project, then absolutely. I want to I wanna post something that uh, Soham literally just said that kind of coincides with that, uh, that comments. Uh, I find it to be, to fit right in. Sorry, it's micro. But yeah, they're essentially saying that, you know, if there is something that, you know, they that fits their field, just reach out. Uh, we're, we're, we're here to help. They want to see us succeed just as much as, you know, we all do. So it's uh, it's refreshing having that, you know, close bond and close relationship with a community, uh, sorry, a company that we're working with. At the end of the day, you know, we're just paying them to to develop our exchange. They don't need to go above and beyond like they have for us in the past, and you know, have offered to do so. So, it's yeah. intriguing how it just happened naturally too. Um, we're 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 quite blessed to have have them as the people we are we are currently working with and, and plan mm. to work with them for a very long time. Yeah, I think every day we're given a reason to, you know 
be grateful that we chose them <laughs> yeah, yeah. to work with. So I'm excited. I'm really excited for the beta. Um, we do have, you know, business as usual. We do have, you know, our, our normal stuff upcoming. Like once we get past this hurdle, um, you know, the next week basically, um, and we see the results of whatever this, you know, hacker plans to do. Um, we've got, you know, our NFT raffle upcoming. We've got, um, I think we have a ledger partnership, which I know I appreciate the irony of that. Um, <laughs> ledger, I think it's a ledger giveaway um, upcoming. We've yep. got. Um, we're gonna. We've got a, we've got a few more collaborations as well <laughs> planned. Um, yeah, send it to Artie. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're really just going to keep on building. Um, and then, it's, you know, I'm really excited to dig into the sort of meat of updates from Tech Alchemy once they're underway, being able to provide, you know, regular updates on what's being worked on, um, their response to our feedback to the alpha and, you know, the different um, beta launches because, I, I, you know, I think we're going to be doing it in phases. So definitely really exciting. Um, yeah, said those are bot accounts that stem from like one or two individuals. I'm I'm close with the team over at Poor. I know it's not coming from them as a team. Um, you know, every community has bad actors. If you look at it, they dump a few like you know they comment on a few other projects as well. Um, just from my time in the space, and I've seen them do it before. <clears throat> Pardon me. The other projects before Poor even existed, where the, you know they'll just go dump on a bunch of close uh, communities that have like sorry projects that have communities that are close together. Um, and then, you know, while pumping up one in particular, it's just, um, yeah, it stems from like a handful of individuals and it's mostly bot accounts. Our recommendation is just don't interact with it beyond reporting it. Um, you know, if you have concerns over what they're saying, absolutely come ask us. It's pretty much all incorrect um, <laughs> and not factual information that's being posted. But, uh, but yeah, it's just... Uh, it's just one of those things that you have to deal with. There's always going to be, you know, trolls and people looking to spread fear and manipulate people's opinions. Hmm. And before we before we wrap it up, um, if anyone is sitting out there with any questions or still confusions around any of this, please please either raise your hand right now um, or put the question in in chat or um, please post it in the Q&A section of the Discord. We are more than happy to uh, walk through, clarify, um, explain as much as possible. Um, the point of this is very much to bring clarity um, and understanding. So um, please do not hesitate um, whatsoever. If you are nervous about uh, publicly asking, um, please open up a ticket in the help center and you can do it privately one-on-one. -on -one. Um, a hundred percent, we want to uh, provide transparency and a sense of understanding um, and a sense of calm um, to, to bring to you guys. Uh, so please use all routes and outlets um, that you can. Um, Let's see, Mr. Hull, if you are able to buy back the hacked funds, you will notify the community immediately. So do, if you, do you mean like peer-to-peer? -peer? If the guy responds, absolutely, we will notify the community. Um, but if it's, you know, if it's going to be on market, well, we're just going to take the opportunity and do it. Um, it's not really something that we want to make a platform for or announce before we do it because that gives you know, the ability to inside trade. The reason we provide this information, you know, that there's going to be a sell-off is because, A, you guys are entitled to know because it was a direct result of our actions or inaction. Um, and it, you know, it means that you guys can make an informed decision. Um, but telling you guys right before we were about to buy up a massive chunk, um, that's a bit different. <laughs> But yeah, if we manage to make contact with, with the, you know, hacker, we get a response, we get him, you know, willing to do that peer to peer. Absolutely. We'll tell the community. That's no two ways about that. Um, 
We do. So Wishhawk, I, I do see your comment in the Q&A section. So one of the things about the liquidity pools, from my understanding, is there's been a lot of issues when trying to transfer that to a Gnosis wallet that we yeah. have run into. Um, it does not work very well. Nope. It also um, has issues, because this, this was my first question as well. I was like, <laughs> shouldn't this all be in the Gnosis? Um, but I was educated a bit on that. Um, yeah, liquidity pools not a fan of being in Gnosis, um, also because of the way our contract works with reflections as well. Um, it runs into issues when it's kept behind a multi-sig barrier, which is why, um, you know, the liquidity pools are all secured on ledgers. Um, but this one, like I said, was just left on a bridging wallet for too long uh, before it was moved to a ledger, which again, won't be a mistake we make twice. Um, and then I see your, Wishhawk, I see your question in off topic. Um, the hacked wallet is the bridging wallet, is the bridging wallet, um, which is under the address tab, um, the addresses tab at the top of the community, or the, yeah, in, yeah. in the important yeah. section. Yeah. If, <clears throat> if you're looking for the actual uh, new ownership, um, wallet, the wallet that was uh, that transferred the uh, team finance lock. Uh, I think that's in like the seventh or eighth transaction. Mm. Yeah, it, you know, it was a it's a a relatively uh, relatively brand new wallet um, that has only been used for for one thing, which was um, to yeah form that liquidity pool. That is also, if you click on that wallet and you find it, uh, Wishhawk, you will also see a transaction uh, going into that wallet, which is from our team uh, reaching out uh, to the owner of that wallet, asking for us to buy the tokens back from him. Uh, oh, yeah. Should we buy more coins now every week or month, or is it better to wait? Uh, that is um, fully really up, up to you. you as an individual. <laughs> I am sorry. Yeah. That is fully up to you. You know, if the uh, if the expectation, it's it's hard to say. So, if you're somebody who just periodically likes to buy, then nothing really changes for you. Um, but the information that we've given you is that we are anticipating a large sell-off in you know five and a half days' time um, when it unlocks. So. We just want everyone to have that information available to them so that they can make as informed decisions as possible. So if you're somebody who, who wants to sell to reposition and buy again when it dumps, th that's up to you. If you want to buy now and then buy again after, that's up to you. Um, if you don't want to buy at all and you're just happy holding what you've got, that's up to you. If you've lost faith and you want to sell your entire bag and leave, again, completely up to you. Um, we've given the information so that you guys can make your own decisions and Again, it would go against everything this project stands for, for us to not give you um, as much information as we possibly can. Yeah, because the reality is the fact that we gave this information led to a larger sell-off than what this individual has to actually sell. Yeah, that's correct. So <laughs> by a significant margin. Yeah. Um, but that's the price you pay for taking the news and and being being willing to share. Being transparent. I mean, the <laughs> thing is, in my opinion, it's still the lesser of two evils um, because you can recover price, you can't recover people's trust. And yeah, okay, it was definitely a blow to trust knowing that we failed to secure the liquidity properly, but lying to the community and then acting shocked when they get dumped on uh, five days later and pretending we didn't know, that's a much bigger breach of trust in my opinion, and that would lead to a much more significant sell-off than what we're seeing right now. Also, as I said, I like to be able to sleep at night, so <laughs> it's not something you'll ever catch me doing. In fact, if the devs had even suggested holding it from you guys, I would have been the first person to kick up a stink about it publicly. Um, which, you know, <laughs> Artie and, and Cram can probably attest to the fact that I uh, as as a probably as close to getting angry as I physically can, definitely got stern and had some words 
um, with, with each of the devs over the last few days, just, you know, around the situation as a whole. But throughout the entire process, you know, all we've been thinking about is, you know, how can we present this to the community? How can we make sure that they have the information that they need? Um, how can we do it in a reasonable amount of time where, you know, we've, we've been able to actually gather the information and make sure we have our facts right, um, but also not, you know, delayed too long? Right. Does anyone have any other questions or concerns? Or, or, or we a have joke. a, I'll or, accept or a joke. A joke. Uh, <laughs> hmm. You know, being a dad, I, sh I should have something ready to go 24 <laughs> 7. I don't understand why I don't. I do love a good dad joke. Because it's a fucking Monday. But as someone who has not <laughs> not sold, thank you. Mm. I'm going to quote Artie here. Thank you for the reflections all day today. Been wonderful. And can you guys please get this exchange built quickly, <laughs> or at least a beta? I'm on it. <laughs> because yeah. my beta, I was trying to get. I literally planned a vacation around doing two weeks solid of playing yeah, Diablo 4, <laughs> and I got the wrong fucking dates. It doesn't happen until another two months, and now I have two weeks of vacation that I don't know what to do. I uh, Yeah, I'm in chat with Nappers yesterday, and... He's just like, why isn't the Diablo 4 beta live? And I was like, it doesn't come out until June. <laughs> I thought it said 4-6, and I spent $100 on the, the ultimate deluxe just for the four days pre. Same. <laughs> and here I am on 4-2 being like, why the hell can I not play Diablo 4 right now? And... <laughs> Sure enough, it says 6-6 six, six instead of 4-6. And I'm just... I'm pissed. My disappointment <laughs> is immeasurable and my day is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, bless. Yeah. That, yeah. Is, that is life. That is just life. Get some rest. Read a book, watch no, some movies. I'm going to find another <laughs> game to play. All so that, if yeah. anyone, anyone wants to play a game... <laughs> Maybe maybe this is what I'll do. Maybe in my spare time, I will have a personally funded Discord community game at some point for us to play this week, and someone can win more KTO. I'll think on it. Hell yeah. I don't know, though. <laughs> well, I'm still planning to do a birthday event for myself in six days. I want to do something. I don't know whether or not it, it'll be... I mean, I've floated some ideas whether or not I match buys up to a certain amount for 24 hours, or... Um, for every buy above $25 for 24 hours, I'll contribute $25 of my own money to a pool, and then we'll decide as a community what to do with it at the end. Not sure yet, but I like, I you know, doing fun things and giving back to the community, and my birthday's a great excuse, so. <laughs> uh, one of the things, and I'm not, I don't want to diminish, but I kind of want to end here, is at the end of the day, the message is clear. Uh, right now, this is a distraction. It's caused a lot of drama. Like, holy fuck, a lot of grown people are crazy. Um, and I understand we're dealing with money. But it is a distraction from the fact that it is a huge milestone made this week. We have hmm. the penultimate bill being paid. Construction is underway. And very, very soon... I hate that fucking word. <laughs> we will have the transparent documentation around here are our estimates for completion of said product. And we will have a realization of all of the vision that we have held through a whole lot of shit, guys, to finally mm -hmm. see come to a fruition. And, and that work does not stop, even though this is still going on in the background. And it's still, unfortunately, on our devs' minds. But at the end of the day, as long as work is still being completed, 
and and the project is still moving forward and we have wonderful people like queenie cram arty mike uh, i guess i can throw jacks in there jacks all working and, and working oh yeah and yoan <laughs> the silent man that makes it all happen moving forward <laughs> and building honestly a disruptor in the space mm -hmm. when you disrupt you cause a lot of waves and eventually those waves are going to start uh start making movement in the ocean and you have to have patience and trust and passion uh to see it come to fruition couldn't have said it better myself and i wholeheartedly agree like i said it doesn't doesn't shake my resolve in the project i don't think it you know it was it was a it was a rude wake up for for the team um you know for the specifics of security um but you know it's one that we've immediately rectified doing everything in our power to fix and again doesn't change how we feel about the project our ability to work on the project um or take away from the progress we've made so far so let's go kto and uh I'm really looking forward to, like I said, sinking my teeth into the first of um, many tech up tech alchemy updates. Awesome! All right, mm -hmm. thanks everybody. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, I want to step in here. Sorry, I want to step in real quick, just for a second. Um, oh, yeah. I, I haven't really given my thoughts on you know what's happened, and for those that that know me like i don't really do rah rah speeches and all that I'm, I'm really straight to the point and uh like no bullshit uh we fucked up um i wanted to say we're sorry for this and uh we're gonna do everything we can to earn back open honest secure um i want to thank everybody that will stick with us through this yep that's that's all i have <laughs> absolutely and you know it is it is what it is. These things happen in life. It's shit. We fucked up, but we're owning it. We're fixing it, and we're making sure it doesn't happen again. Exactly. Uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting yelled at by Pete right now. To kill it, Pete? Yep. <laughs> Good. Yep, <he's laughs> sorry, but you've, been, you've, been, you've all been yelled at by a few of us at this point, <laughs> and, and I'm sorry to say, but you've earned it. <laughs> uh, uh, but I, I wanted to point out he is he is also another individual who is uh, helping us in the background diving into this. He he's currently running a multitude of pen tests for the next six months for us. Uh, mm -hmm. Something you know for project owners, I, I highly recommend because it, it's very detailed reports and and even now he is seeing that it, it is not just been our wallet that's been hit and that it's it's floating around in in several projects several communities and uh he's building a report right now for everybody to see so so you know to just make others aware yeah that's awesome and then you know we can share it with fellow communities like i said well, there's a lot of projects that are of similar size to us that you know can't withstand this um and i think yeah we have a you know a duty to share that information with them as well um so publicly i am just going to throw this out to the development team you guys i'm gonna put them on the spot but we do know it's gonna come i'm not saying change the tax but i'm saying mm -hmm. why don't we double the reflections to the holders keep the tax at 10 percent, just swap it all around yeah, just uh, throwing that out there because I just it, saw it, it come across in general chat. Pandas yeah. say three percent. I was like, oh my god, we could just do something. <laughs> it's definitely something that we could do, and again, it could be something that we um, phase into. We could do like a day of zero percent tax, a day of double reflections, a day of you know returning to normalcy, or something like that. Um, it's within our power to do. So. Yeah, I'll say that it's got my support. I mean, look, even Mike, who hates turning off the taxes, all behind it. So, <laughs> just goes to show how committed we are to uh, to making things right and making things yeah. um, available. All right. Talk. Oh, look at that. Nappers is a badass. Right there. Called. Done and over. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> 
Alrighty, so thank you guys all for coming. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Um, also, just just the heads up, I, I'm not really going to be available for any like uh, voice-based things from the 5th of April to the 10th. I've got um, my best friend and her partner coming interstate to see me for the first time in a couple of years for my birthday. So um, I'll be around if you ping me, um, but I might not respond very quickly. Um, so the next one of these probably won't be until like weekend after this one. Or Napa's going to do one by himself. <laughs> Up to you yes. guys. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Alrighty.